Hello everyone, my name is Alexander Makarov and I'm a proof work core developer from Russia. If you are following me at uh, GitHub or a frequent forum visitor, you probably know me as Sam Dirk. Yesterday I've got an email with questions from Cass and I briefly discussed this with John, who's a founder and main framework architect. Now I'm ready to answer these questions for you. Let's just start with the list. And the first question is about my technical background and how I joined E. Overall, I'm developing software for about 10 years and now it's mainly Android and web. I've tried hardware and desktop applications as well. Uh, my primary programming language for a long time was Java. For just for fun projects, I've used PHP since it was faster to develop with. In 2007 I got uh, sick of my own framework and started checking popular ones. That time I have uh, stick with CodeIgniter and in two years we made popular in Russia uh, forming a good community. After digging into CodeIgniter more and more I realized that it's not good enough and in 2009 the process of choosing a framework started again. At the end of evaluation, I decided to try E. I've uh, finished translation of the guide and uh, blog tutorial. Well, because of my past experience, I was missing many things in 1.0, so I've just uh, started feeling issues and uh, proposing fixes. And at some point in 2010, Chan just said, Why don't you handle it yourself? Gave me commit permissions and said that now I'm the part of the core team. By the time I decided to drop Java for web development and focus on developing stuff with using E. Now to the second question. How do you see the evolution of the framework worldwide? This one is a bit unclear, so I'll assume that it's about frameworks in general. And overall evolution is different for a framework um, because uh, there are lots of different framework types. But there are common stuff and these things are dependency management based on Composer, a more rapid and simpler development, better web API support both as provider and consumer, and new technology integration and support, such as NoSQL, CSS frameworks, etc. Number 3. Based on your experience developing E version 2.0, what are the most interesting new features? Well, personally, I think the new extension management uh, that is based on Composer is pretty interesting. It's not fully current, exposed currently, but uh, closer to release, you'll see its true power. Then a database layer. Um, well, it's, it has consistent syntax and built-in queries for both um, low-level SQL and Active Record. And that's much better in terms of memory management, no SQL support, and uh, well, uh, you can even uh, join an uh, Active Record uh, model with uh, something that is no SQL. So, the redesigned testing support based on Codeception and the new database feature framework are pretty notable as well. And the built in web API support that's been worked by Chan should be great as well. To the next question What are the changes which you anticipate might require more adaptation of existing 1.1 uh, applications? Well, version 2.0 uses PHP 5.4, that means namespaces and traits. And there's no untouched parts of 1.1 in 2.0 because of that. Good parts are, of course, still there, so learning for people familiar with 1.1 uh, should be much easier. For a common application, it seems Active Record will be the most time consuming part to port, but it should be as well very enjoyable to work with. Since, well, uh, I can say that new Active Record is much, much better. Now about the release date. And 
Well, it's just an estimate. And estimates may be inaccurate. We're not working on E full time and life can give us more or less time for it. But our current estimate is about one month to the beta and uh, another two months to release. Now on to the next question, it's what are the main challenges ahead of E framework? Competitors, technology changes and mobile. Well, we have lots of challenges, as it was uh, mentioned in the question. All these uh, do apply and, well, as for mobile, it's getting much stronger these years and that's why we're working on the REST API support. It's tricky, but it will be done. We're adopting HTML5 bootstrap framework, we're adopting PHP 5.4 features, we're using Composer, and as for competition, most of our best competitors, pretty strong actually competitors, went to a direction of uh, too much flexibility and complexity. So there are too many layers and, well, it's not that bad, but uh, it's a totally different style. So I think we have a good time ahead with 2.0. Now, what can you tell about the quality of the extensions available for E? Hmm, that's a good question. And yeah, well, quality varies. Quality varies, and there is no quality and control currently. So there are both good and not so good extensions. And uh, closer to 2.0 release, we're going to integrate uh, E with uh, GitHub and packages. It will make both installation, maintenance and collaboration much, much easier. We are considering making some extensions uh, featured and providing code reviews for these. So at least some extensions will be of uh, perfect quality. Also currently there are some um, official extensions, such as uh, DebugTalkBar, G. These are all moved out of the core framework to extensions and installable via Composer. These are, of course, of uh, perfect quality. Well, now about my favorite extensions. Well, it's a kind of hard question because I'm not using extensions much. Um, well, right in the, uh, almost all I code myself. But uh, at least I can name a few. First is uh, nested set behavior. Uh, that's uh, because of its quality. I think it's a great piece of code. And the second one is uh, NLS client script uh, that prevents loading already loaded client-side resources twice. That's very useful and allows you to implement uh, single-page websites very, very quickly and very conveniently. Now the next question is about uh, my feelings as a developer regarding the direction PHP has taken especially in regards to integration with Composer. Well, I like the direction PHP is heading very much, but <laughs> there are constantly syntax and performance improvements. And as for Composer, my first impression was that it may be too complex. Well, it is uh, kind of complex compared to not using it. But after some Practice, I think uh, everyone will love how much it simplifies the package management and dependency management. Next question is about the best way to create an extension with its own assets without using Composer. Oh, that should be kind of tricky. <laughs> how is autoloading handled in that case? Well, if it's about E2, then first of all, the extension will not be installable and one won't be able to add it to the website. That's a very bad part and uh, because of that, one should use Composer. But not using it is possible as well. Autoloading and uh, relative path for extensions are absolutely possible without Composer. But uh, one should put in a readme in installation instructions some extra points like put an extension in a certain directory and then add an extra e set ls call to allow autoloading. Now the question about autoloading. How it's working exactly and which are the differences? 
I assume differences are from 1.1. So currently it is a PCR4 compatible SPL autoloader. Implementation details are in uh, base class autoload method and compared to 1.1 it doesn't scan file system it just uh, takes the class name and maps it to the file system without uh, any extra checks or scans. So it's basically significantly faster and well simpler. In regards to choosing namespace and directory structure PSR4 is quite flexible so to prevent confusion we have some guidelines for extension authors. I'll uh, pass a link later. Uh, next question is, do you think that E2 has a steeper learning curve compared to E1.1? Well, yes, I do think it's a bit steeper learning curve, that, but it's not that much steeper. It's because of PHP 5.4 it's much more feature-rich compared to 5.2 and 5.2 was used for E1.1. Also we have uh, more features so it will take a bit longer to learn them all. Hopefully it will be compensated with better documentation. We are going to cover more topics and well this time we have a professional writer on board. Uh, Larry Ullman is helping us. What new features do you like most? Well, personally, I love Active Record and I love very much the debug toolbar. These are my personal favorites. What have been the biggest challenges and am I happy to the adopted solutions? Well, life was challenging during 2.0 development, so its release date shifted significantly in the end. And uh, also, some things were hard to design. For example, Active Record was redesigned from scratch several times. I'm quite happy with the current solution, but uh, if there will be design problems, I think we'll start 2.1 and fix it. So it's not a huge problem. What sort of contribution from the community of developers would be more favorable to the framework at this time? Hmm. Well, currently our main focus is, as you noted, version 2.0. So the most preferable ways of uh, contribution are to review the commits at GitHub, to report issues and help fixing it, then to help us write unit tests. That's yeah, that's boring, but it's uh, really appreciated if someone will take it and write it properly and probably fix some bugs as well. Well, uh, then it's to help us write and improve documentation. It's, uh, it has some layout, some uh, documents have to be done marks and this uh, could be taken from the class reference, from the E1.1 guide and uh, just moved to the and adopted to 2.0. Uh, and then to just try to test it and to report issues. And that was the uh, last questions. I hope you enjoy the answers, so have a good time and enjoy your meetup. Bye-bye.